During the last decade of the 20th century, 30 new diseases made their first appearance, never described before. They appeared suddenly, without notice, putting public health organizations around the world on alert and holding a threat over the global economy. They all share two characteristics, a tendency to turn into an epidemic, and wild animals transmit most of them, practically all of them. Today, we witness the outcome of one of these diseases carried by an animal virus. The virus abandons its habitat and readies, minute by minute and by chance coincidence, for an outbreak all over the world. These are the makings of the first pandemic scenario in the 21st century. Is it an isolated incident? Are we witnessing an increase in infectious diseases from animal viruses? All new diseases that have been described in the last 10 years are virus-related, the smallest infectious agent that exists in nature. They have names like Hendra, Nipah, SARS, and viruses with no name. They have appeared suddenly, inducing epidemic outbreaks that only international collaboration has been able to stop. The list continues to grow. Since 1997, there's been a new animal virus preparing to jump to another species. It's called H5N1, Influenza A, an avian influenza virus. From the Asian mainland, it makes a vicious entrance. And despite the enormous distance separating them, here in Montana, the United States, in labs embedded in the Rocky Mountains, they're waiting for it. The scientists are getting ready to work under high biological security conditions that'll permit them to investigate the new virus and others already established without the risk of infection. The appearance of these infectious agents that jump from animals to humans, spreading diseases, sped up the construction of this pioneer laboratory designed for their confinement. It's the great project of this scientist and international expert in this investigative line, Marshall Bloom, manager of the Rocky Mountains Laboratories, United States. We have to worry about them because we never know when somebody who's on a safari or a hunting trip or a fishing trip in Africa or South America might become infected with one of these level four agents, come back to the United States and come, and come down with, with the infection. So even though these viruses don't occur in the United States, it's important for us to study them because you know they, they're there today, there today, but they could be here tomorrow. And we have to be prepared and we have to learn about them. Most of these viruses live in their hosts without provoking the disease. H5N1 uses wild water birds. It multiplies inside them, developing shape shifts, mutations that enable them to jump from the animal host and infect a different species. It can be a different animal or a human. It's a species shift and a virus can do it without warning. You know, if we look at the most recent example of a virus which people are really, really worried about. I think we have to look at the avian influenza outbreak which is continuing in Southeast Asia right now. And there are a variety of different kinds of influenza viruses, but the one that people are so concerned about at the moment is one which is affecting 
bird populations in Southeast Asia. And the worry is, so there's a disease which is definitely coming from animals. We even know the animal is going to be a duck or a chicken. So the worry is, is that that virus is going to jump from, popu from a virus which infects ducks and chickens and infect people and that somehow that virus will gain the ability to spread readily from person to person. To jump to another species, viruses can develop and change their characteristics, their structure, in the matter of a few decades. In order to do the same, an animal would need hundreds of thousands of years. It's like comparing the evolution of a fossil to the corresponding live animal. History shows that in each species jump, a new virus appears, creating a disease for which we have no defense at all. This is the fear that H5N1 arouses. And these are viruses, influenza viruses of a type that no one in the world has any immunity to, which would set us up for another uh, pandemic influenza virus, uh, an, an influenza pandemic where millions of people around the world could be affected. Asia is prime breeding grounds for respiratory disease viruses, the influenza. These viruses periodically jump from wild water birds, their natural reservoir, to humans. <laughs> 